that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. <laughs> Do not say so, Lysander, say not so. What well, though, Lord, she loved you. Hermia, Lord, loved thou, and yet Hermia still loves you. Then be content. Content with Hermia? No, I do repent. The tedious minutes with her I have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena, I love. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? It's not enough, it's not enough, young man, that I never did, nor never can deserve a sweet look from Demetrius' eye. But you must flout my insufficiency? But fare you well. She sees not Helena, Hermia. Hermia, sleep down there, and never mayest come Lysander near. For as a serpent of the sweetest things, the deepest loathing to the stomach brings. And all my powers address your love and might to honor Helen and be her knight. Help me! Oh, Lysander, help me! I me for pity, what a dream was here, Lysander! Look how I quake with fear! Lysander? <laughs> Lysander! What? Remove Lysander! Lord! Lysander! Lysander! And then I perceive that you are not an eye. Either death or you, I shall find immediately. Uh, are we all met? Pass, pass, and here is a marvelous convenient place for rehearsal. Uh, Peter Quince. What says thou, Holy Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. First, Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. <laughs> How answer you that? Fire lake in a parlous beer. <laughs> I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a wait. I have a device to make all well. Write me a prologue. <laughs> and let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords. And that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. This will put them out of fear. <laughs> we will have such a prologue and, um, it shall be written in eight and six. Uh, make it two more. Let it be written in eight and eight. <laughs> Will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? I hear it. I promise you. Mm, mm, a lion among ladies. It's the most dreadful thing. Now when the prologue must tell I am not a lion. Nay. She must name her name. And half her face must be seen through the lion's neck. And she herself must you know, speak through, saying, Thus, or to the same defect, uh, ladies, or uh, oh, fair ladies, uh, I would wish you, or I would uh, request you, or I would um, uh, entreat you, entreat you, entreat you, <laughs> not to fear, not to tremble. If you think I came hither as a lion, you were pity of my life. No, I'm no such thing. And there, let her name her name, and tell the lady she snap the tinker. Well, that may be. <laughs> But there's two hard things. That is, to bring moonlight into the great chamber for, you know, Pyramus and Disney meet by moonlight. Let the moon shine the night before your play. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, a calendar, a calendar, a calendar. Look at the almanac, look at the almanac. Find out moonshine. Find out moonshine. Find it. Yes, it does shine that night. Why? Then may you leave a casement of the great chamber window where we play open and the moon may shine in at the casement. Hey! <laughs> or else, one must come in with a bush of thorn and a lanthorn and say he comes to present or disfigure. Which I am. <laughs> <laughs> then there's another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber for Pyramus and Thisbe says the story to talk through the break of the wall. You can never bring in a, a wall. 
Someone or other must present wall. <laughs> oh. Let them hold their fingers thus, and through that cranny shall Pyramus and Disney whisper. Oh, well, if that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down, every mother's son, and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. When you have spoken your speech, enter into that room. And so everyone, according to the cue. What hempen homespuns have we swaggering here, so near the cradle of the fairy queen? What, a, a play? <laughs> I'll be an auditor. An actor, too, perhaps, if I see cause. Speak of your Fisby, the flowers of odious, oh, odious, sacred, sweet. Odors, odors. <laughs> oh. Odors, savor sweet, so hath thy breath, my dearest Fisby dear. But hark, I hear a voice. Stay thou but here a while, and by and by I will to thee reappear. A stranger here amidst an air played here. <laughs> must I speak now? A merry must you three must understand that he goes but to see a noise that he heard and is to come again. <laughs> Most radiant pyramids, most lily white of hue, of color like the red rose on triumphant briar, as true as truest horse that yet would never tire. I meet the pyramids at Ninny's tomb. Ninus tomb, man! <laughs> Ninus tomb! <laughs> Why you must not speak that yet, that you answer to pyramids. You speak your part at once, cues and all. Pyramus, begin your cues pass. It is never tired. As true as truest horse that yet would never tire. If I were fair, fair <laughs> Disney, I were only thine. <laughs> And bark and neigh and grunt and roar and burn like horse, hound, hog, bear, fire, a dancer! Why do they run away? Oh, this is a neighbor of them to make me a fear. Oh, Bob, what do I see on there? Oh, what do you see? You see an ass head here on here? I see their neighbor. This is to make an ass out of me. <laughs> to frighten me if they could. But I'll not stir from this place. Do what they can. I'll walk up and down here and I'll uh, sing so they'll hear that I'm not afraid. <laughs> the ooze of cock so black of hue, with orange and tawny bill, the rustle with the note so true, the wren with little quill. What angel wakes me from my flowery bed? The finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plain song, cuckoo gray. Who's no full many a man of mark and dares but answer nay? For indeed, who had said his wit is so foolish a bird? Oh, my don't oh. the mortal sing again? My ear is much and never doubt thy note. So is mine eye enthralled to thy shape. Oh, and thy fair virtues forth, for force to move me to say, to say. Where I love thee. Oh, well, uh, methinks, mistress, you should have little reason for that. And uh, yet, uh, oh, reason and love keep a uh, little company together nowadays. Thou art beautiful. Oh, yeah, not so neither. But if I had been enough to get out of this wood, I have enough for my own turn. Out of this wood, do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. Uh, I am a spirit of no common weight. <laughs> the summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore go with me. I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, 
and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing while thou on pressed flowers dost sleep, and I shall purge thy mortal grossness, so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Tie up my lover's tongue, bring him silently. 